The final James Lapine Sondheim collaboration is called Passion. It's a little bit less well known. It has the honor, if you could call it that, of being the Tony Award winning best musical with the shortest run. So there has never been a show that has won the Tony Award for best musical and also had such a short run. <laughs> um, and it's because it's difficult to watch this show. It is um, the least hummable of Sondheim's scores, arguably, because most of the music is written not in a kind of standard song form, but actually in what Sondheim calls like arioso passages, so closer to opera, where the music just builds on itself and builds on itself and builds on itself, and there isn't like a verse chorus kind of structure. Um, but the score of Passion makes a lot of sense, even though it is arguably less structured, it makes a lot of sense. And in fact, I would argue that it's actually simpler than the scores to almost any other Sondheim show because pretty much the entire score is built around two melodies which are variations of each other. And I'm gonna show you how that works in Passion. Arguably, every major musical moment in the entire score is built around two melodies which are variations of each other. So that's what I want to show you right now. So the opening number of Passion shows Giorgio with Clara, who is the woman that he's in, in love with. And Clara is married, but she's planning on leaving her husband to be with Giorgio. <clears throat> um, and they sing this melody. <laughs> I thought I knew what love was and just another love story that's what they would claim another simple love story are in all of them the same that's what they sing in the opening number another simple love story what I want you to pay attention to is Another simple love story. That is just like a major scale going down, basically. And then it jumps one note. It's a very simple melody. It just descends perfectly. You know, there's no back and forth. It doesn't go. It doesn't go. It's just straight down. Another simple love story. Are in all of them the same? So that's the question that they're asking in the opening number. Isn't every love story the same? Well, as if on cue, Giorgio meets Fosca, who is this sick woman <clears throat> with some, definitely some physical problems, some mental problems as well. And he offers her some books and she comes to thank him for the books. And basically the first thing she sings in the entire show, she sings like one little passage right before this. Um, but basically the first thing she sings in the entire show is this. I do not read to think. I do not read to learn. So that is the second melody. It's kind of a variation on the first one. So this is a simple version. If we m mess it up a little bit, and instead of going straight down, we do a little turn around and go up instead, it ends up being the same. It has the same rhythm to it. Versus Ba -ba -da -ba -da. They have the exact same melody, and they start the same way. Another simple love story versus I do not read to think. So they start the same way, and then they like go in opposite directions after that. So they are kind of variations of each other. And those two melodies, 
basically make up the entirety of the score. And they represent the central kind of conflict that's happening in the show between these two kinds of love. Giorgio and Clara is a simple love story that is just like every other love story. Aren't all of them the same? You know, oh, he's in love with her and she's got a husband, but she's planning to leave her husband and they love each other very much. Fosca's love for Giorgio is not like that. It's intense, it's obsessive, it is not safe, it is not casual, it is not logical. And Giorgio is trapped in the middle of these two women who love him in such different ways. And the two kinds of love kind of battle it out over the course of the story. Giorgio tells Fosca about his love with Clara. And he sings, <coughs> this is Giorgio's opinion on love at this point in the show. He sings, where you think the same thoughts, want the same things, live as one, feel as one, breathe as one. He's like, that is love to me right now. It's thinking the same things, like feeling the same things, wanting the same things, living as one, feeling as one, breathing as one. I.e., it's a love that doesn't have a lot of conflict or tension or complication in it. And the melody he sings... <laughs> Where we think the same thoughts, which is another simple love story, and then just a different last note. Another simple, where we think the same thoughts. So he's singing melody A and saying, this is what love is to me right now. Fosca's reply is basically, how dare you talk to me, this sick, ailing woman about how lovely your love life is. That's great, I'm happy for you, but like that is not very nice to me because I am alone and miserable. She says, you can be incredibly cruel, Captain, and she sings, to speak to me of love, to dangle words like happiness, beautiful, superior, you can't be that naive. And the melody? Melody B. This more confusing, more complicated kind of love. We move forward, and Giorgio's kind of shaken by this interaction with Fosca. He sings this letter to... Uh, he, he sends this letter to Clara, and... What he writes is that he can't wait to feel her touch again. But the melody he sings... To feel your touch again... It's, I do not read to dream, and it's, um, to speak to me of love. It is Fosca's melody that he's singing. So, he's gotten affected by Fosca in some weird way that he can't quite understand yet. He's starting to sing her melody. The next thing that happens is that Fosca asks Giorgio to write a love letter to her. Um, and he writes this letter that Fosca dictates to him, kind of like as a fantasy, and for various reasons he feels like he's obliged to do it. And the melody, lo and behold, I wish I could forget you. Ba -da 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 -da. But, uh, it's a variation on I do not read to think and it's a variation on to speak to me of love it's melody B which represents Fosca's kind of love for, jo for Georgia which is crazy and detached from reality and illogical then Georgia goes off to a secluded place to read a letter that Clara has sent to him and Fosca basically follows him there and Giorgio freaks out at her. He's like, oh my God, leave me alone. Is this what you call love? This endless and insatiable smothering pursuit of me. You think that this is love? That's what Giorgio sings to her. Well, he's singing about kind of love B. The crazy kind, the illogical kind, the passionate 
kind. Melody B, is this what you call love? Because remember, we know what Giorgio thinks love is. He thinks it's where you think the same thoughts, which is a much more simple melody. Just a classic little descending melody. Another simple love story. That's what he thinks love is. He thinks love is melody A. Fosca thinks love is melody B, and he goes, is melody B, is this what you call love? Then uh, Giorgio goes to the train station, and they have this conversation where Fosca's kind of honest with him for the first time and just speaks from the heart. And, and Giorgio says, you have to give me up. And Fosca sings this very simple song. Loving you is not a choice, it's who I am. And it actually is quite simple in a way, even though it is complicated and messy in a different way than Clara's. The melody she's singing is very simple, and it shows that her love for him is very pure. I couldn't find the melody B, this like crazy passionate love, in the melody that Fosca sings for Loving You, but I was like, I bet if I look at the accompaniment, I can find melody B, and sure enough, it's right here. Loving you is not a choice, it's who I am. Loving you is not a choice, and not much reason to rejoice. There it is again. Melody B. So Fosca's love for Giorgio is this, like, not as clear, not as simple, not as cliche kind of love, but it's still pure. And you can tell that it's pure because of how simple the melody is that she's singing. It's just constant quarter notes. And, and Giorgio is very moved by this honest display. So he ends up getting into a fight with Clara, basically. And Clara, notably, never sings Melody B once in the show, ever. She has a lot of opportunities to, but she doesn't. She could sing, for example, here. We can have that happiness. She could have sung. We can have that happiness. We can, we can have that happiness, right? Or something. She could have sung that. It fits the rhythm, but she doesn't. She sings something totally different. Um, but while Clara is singing the classic, like, another simple love story melody, Giorgio begins to sing melody B. Is this what you call love? This logical and sensible, practical arrangement. So we see that Giorgio is affected by Fosca's love for him in the Melody B style. And then the show basically ends with the big 11 o'clock number is No One Has Ever Loved Me, where Giorgio sings. Giorgia leaves Clara and chooses to be with Fosca, and he sings. No one has ever loved me as deeply as you. And that's a simplified version of Melody B. So in the end, kind of the more passionate, crazy, illogical love actually wins out over this sensible and logical arrangement. And you can see the two melodies fighting each other. Please like and subscribe. Marquee, the Broadway Maven's Weekly Blast, comes out every Thursday. It includes piano talks, news, reviews, videos, Broadway blasts, quizzes, and more. Get Marquee for free and learn about all classes and projects at thebroadwaymaven.com. And here's a Stephen Sondheim playlist.